This movie begins with the supervillain, Megamind, falling to his doom. According to him, he went to jail, lost the girl of his dreams, and got his butt kicked really hard. The scene then cuts to years before, on another planet, far from Earth. Baby Megamind is placed in a capsule by his parents as his home comes crashing down. His mom hands him an alien fish in a small bowl, saying it is his minion, and it will take care of him. The capsule is then launched, and after a while, he meets another alien baby in a capsule, who seems to be smarter than he is. The capsules both head to Earth while the other planets get sucked into a black hole. On reaching the Earth, baby Megamind's capsule is headed for a rich home when the other capsule collides with his. Baby Megamind ends up landing in jail and being raised by the prisoners while the other baby lives a life of luxury, adapting the name Metro Man for his uniqueness and is adored by everyone. After a few years and with some time off for good behavior, Megamind eventually goes to the same school as Metro Man, who bullies him while receiving praise from his classmates. Megamind is impressed at how much Metro Man is loved by all. He tries to use his intelligence to as well impress the students, but always ends up getting punished at the quiet corner. While he spends most of his time alone, he discovers a way to dehydrate inanimate objects and rehydrate them as well. Through the course of time, Megamind is treated badly and is always the odd one out. Feeling left out, he has an epiphany and claims his purpose as a villain. He then gets himself expelled by using a blue paint bomb thus setting off a rivalry between him and Metro Man. In the present, Megamind, aided by his fish-like companion Minion, frequently and unsuccessfully battles Metro Man for control of the city. Sometime later, at the grand opening of the new Metro Man Museum, reporter Roxanne Ritchie is kidnapped by Minion with Megamind's invisible mobile and is taken to Megamind's hideout. Meanwhile, Megamind devises his usual cunning plans and is able to escape prison using a wristwatch that uses holographic manipulations to turn himself into the police chief. At Megamind's hideout, Roxanne mocks him for always being predictable, as all he does is kidnap her and get Metro Man to come save her, and the cycle keeps repeating itself. At the museum opening, Megamind places a call to Metro Man, where Roxanne tells Metro Man their location, an abandoned observatory. Unfortunately, Megamind was not correctly predicted this time, as it was only a trap to lure Metro Man into the real observatory, where Megamind foils his plans of obliterating Metro Man with his sun-powered weapon once and for all. Suddenly, Metro Man collapses. Saying the copper-lined observatory roof weakens his powers, Megamind then blasts Metro Man with the sun-powered weapon. After the explosion, everyone is curious as to whether Metro Man had survived it, and just then, a skeleton with his cape flies into the hideout. This comes as a shock to everyone who never expected that one day, Megamind would actually take down the almighty Metro Man. And with no one around to stop him, Megamind goes on a crime spree, taking over the city. However, he eventually becomes depressed and purposeless with no hero to fight. While watching the news report one night, Roxanne expresses her disappointment in Megamind, asking him if he's happy now and leaving him to his thoughts. Meanwhile, after wrapping up the report for the day, Roxanne's partner and camera boy, Hal Stewart, tries to ask her out. But Roxanne is not interested and saves herself by lying about having work. Later that night, Megamind decides to blow up the Metro Man Museum to forget the hero but sees Roxanne there. In order to conceal himself, he dehydrates the museum's curator, Bernard, into a small cube. Disguised as Bernard using hologram technology, Megamind is able to hold a conversation with Roxanne. She believes that someone will try to stand against Megamind and that where there's evil, good will always emerge. She also mentions that heroes can be made, not born. These remarks then inspire Megamind to use Metro Man's DNA to create a new superhero to fight. The following day, Megamind perfects the formula, but suddenly he starts hearing a phone ring and realizes that it belongs to Bernard. 
When he takes the call, he hears Roxanne's voice on the other side, so he pretends to be Bernard. Roxanne informs him that she's breaking into Megamind's secret base, and to his greatest surprise, she's already at the entrance to the hideout. Megamind is then stuck with pretending to be both Bernard and Megamind to fool her. She gets a hold of the Infuser Gun, which now contains Metro Man's powers, but doesn't actually know what it is. In an effort to get the gun from her, they end up infusing the shot through a drain that enters into Hal, who was just at the end of the pipe after hearing Roxanne's voice. Meanwhile, Megamind fakes an escape from the lair as Bernard with Roxanne. While outside, Roxanne introduces Bernard to Hal, who doesn't seem too excited to meet the new face around his one-sided crush, especially when Roxanne refers to Bernard as her partner. She then promises to call him while leaving with Hal. Later that day, after Roxanne drops Hal off, Megamind and Minion arrive at the apartment complex to observe whom it is they've infused with Metro Man's powers. Minion suggests defusing him since all they could get from looking up Hal is a promising dimwit who is yet to achieve anything. But Megamind suggests that they don't defuse him, claiming it's destiny. Disguising himself via hologram as Hal's space dad, Megamind offers to train Hal to become a superhero. Hal, seeing this as a chance to get with Roxanne, accepts and takes on the name Titan, mistaken as Titan by Hal. We are then taken through a series of daily training with Hal and his space dad. A few days after, while Megamind is lamenting how terrible and slow to learn Hal is, Roxanne drops him a text. He excitedly texts back that he can't wait for their date tonight, and Minion gets suspicious. He continues to date Roxanne in the evenings as Bernard, while during the day, he puts Hal through his superhero training. During one of their dates, Roxanne and Bernard ride bikes to the park. Roxanne then tells him that she used to come there with her mother, but now it's just nothing but a dump. Megamind then cleans up the entire city, and even returns all he had ever stolen, just to make Roxanne happy. Finally, Hal completes his training and is ready to battle Megamind on the great show of good and evil coming up the next day. That night, while Minion takes Megamind's measurements for the new outfit in preparation for the showdown tomorrow, he learns about Megamind's relationship with Roxanne. He then tries to warn Megamind of the consequences when she finds out who he really is. The duo ends up having an argument, which concludes with Minion leaving. Meanwhile, at Roxanne's place, she finally figures out from a pile of clues that Megamind is training a new superhero to challenge him. While she wonders who this Titan character may be, Hal shows up to court her. He almost gives her a heart attack while putting her in danger and saving her. According to him, they will get more into each other if he saves her life. But Hal had totally misunderstood the whole hero thing. After yelling at him to drop her, he drops her off at the top of a lighthouse and reveals himself to Roxanne. Unfortunately, he ends up heartbroken when Roxanne turns him down. After she joins Bernard for their date that evening, Hal follows her and witnesses the date. When the heartbroken Hal leaves, Megamind's Bernard disguise fails, and just as Minion had predicted, Roxanne runs away from him. A heartbroken Megamind then arranges to fight Titan the next day, but when the day of the fight arrives, Titan does not show up. After waiting for hours, Megamind shows up at Hal's apartment, where he learns that Hal is using his powers on a crime spree. Hal even offers to ally with Megamind, but Megamind deliberately reveals his disguises as Space Dad and Bernard, who stole his girl, and all his deceptions towards Hal, hoping to trick him into fighting him. Angered and provoked, Hal savagely beats Megamind in a fight. When the fight ends, Megamind is thrilled to have so much fun after so long. He tells Hal to send him to jail, but instead, Hal has the intention of killing him. With the use of an emergency red button minion installed in Megamind's suit, he quickly flees. After finally realizing that Hal has no interest in justice and means to kill him, Megamind traps him in a ball of copper. However, he is surprised when Hal easily breaks out. Meanwhile, the people of Metro City start to cheer Hal in the hope that they now have a new hero. 
but Hal breaks it to them that the city is now under new management. On the other hand, Megamind flees to Roxanne's apartment, pleading for her to let him in. He manages to convince Roxanne to help him out with finding Metro Man's weaknesses, or even possibly, his hideout. He and Roxanne then escape to Metro Man's old hideout. The hideout turns out to be their former kindergarten class, but with much more internal renovations. Roxanne notices a glass cup on the table with fresh cubes of ice, indicating that someone is there. While they're trying to decipher, they hear a noise from behind. On turning around, they discover that Metro Man is still alive, having faked his death by using his super speed when he was at the observatory. He had thought about how he wanted to live his life, to make his own choice instead of becoming what the city wanted, and he came to the conclusion that it was finally time to resign and pursue his dream as a musician. Meanwhile, Minion finds out from news reports about the rampage being caused by Titan. Back in Metro Man's hideout, Roxanne and Megamind are still in awe that Metro Man has been alive all this while. Roxanne tries to convince him that Metro City needs him, but he refuses to help. Instead, he asserts that a hero will always rise to defeat evil. Outside the lair, Roxanne summons up the courage and suggests they team up and tighten down, but Megamind feels dejected and purposeless. He explains to her that he can never be good, he can't save lives, and he can never get the girl. He walks away and willingly returns to prison while Hal goes on a rampage. While in his cell, Megamind finds out from the news that citizens have begun to flee the city, while the rest are advised to stay indoors. To make things worse, Titan kidnaps Roxanne and does a public broadcast demanding to fight Megamind and threatening to kill Roxanne. With Minion's help, Megamind escapes prison and uses holographic disguises to make Minion appear as him. Minion successfully rescues Roxanne but gets hurt in the process. While Megamind makes himself appear as Metro Man to frighten Titan away for good. However, Megamind's speech patterns give him away, causing Titan to attack Megamind and throw him into the stratosphere. We are then taken back to the beginning scene of the movie. This time, before falling to his doom, Megamind dehydrates himself into a cube and lands safely in a fountain. He then rehydrates next to Titan and manages to extract the DNA, reverting Titan back to his human form. Minion, on the other hand, is fine, as all he needed was water. After everything, Hal is arrested, Megamind and Roxanne rekindle their relationship, and the city celebrates Megamind as a hero. The museum is then converted into one celebrating Megamind, and a disguised Metro Man cheers for him at the grand opening ceremony. The end. Thank you for watching. We appreciate all of you. Please check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you next time.